Hello and welcome back. Today we're making two pocket pry bars. Let's do this. To begin I cut down my stock into two pieces and I used an angle grinder as you can see here with a very thin cut off disc. This made the cut very quick and relatively clean. The angle grinder left a few burrs which I removed with a bench grinder. You can save yourself some money by using a simple permanent marker for the layout. This makes it easier to see the lines you scribe and you can see here I used my square to mark the round overs as well as the pry ends if you want to call it that. Let's call it that. For the rough shaping I started with a coarse wheel and that enabled me to quickly remove stock and get the pry bars into a rough shape. I decided to experiment with concave grinds and use the contact wheel on my belt grinder attachment and on the second one I used the radius of the bigger grinding wheel. I also used the small contact wheel to flatten the sides on the pry bars. To create the bevel on the tip I went back to the coarse wheel and don't bother with the discoloration because we're going to do a heat treatment later. The tip was then ground to a convex shape on the belt grinder. Since the steel was sent to me by a friend, I wasn't sure what kind of steel I was dealing with, um, but I had the impression that it was already hardened. So in order to be able to drill holes into it, I had to anneal the steel, which is what you saw before. Now it was relatively easy to create the holes and I had to drill two holes in each for the pins as well one that wasn't on the center for the bottle opener. I think I should have annealed the seal for longer because part of it was still hardened and so I had to go slow and in increments of half a millimeter to create the nine millimeter holes. I scribed some lines for orientation and then used an angle grinder to create the basic bottle opener shape. Although the cutoff discs leave a relatively clean cut, they always leave some sort of a burr. And I used my belt grinder to remove that burr and clean up the shapes. I left some extra material so I was able to experiment with a shape to create something that would actually work. With all the shaping and drilling done, it was time to heat up the pry bars to non-magnetic and quench them in vegetable oil. Once they had completely cooled down, I cleaned them up on the scotch Pride belt and that was the preparation for the tempering, which I did in the oven. And I think I might have left them in for a bit too long because the colours are a slight touch too dark for, for what I actually wanted. I then polished it up and that removed the oxide layer for the next steps. This wood is called lilac or lilac. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it properly. Um, it was an old root that was in our garden and I discovered that the grain structure was rather pretty when I uh, prepared the wood to be thrown away. So needless to say I kept it and decided to use it on this project. In preparation for the glue up I drilled small indentations into the steel as well as the handle materials as you can see here. The second handle is going to be made from a material that was sent to me by Heath Knuckles actually one of the materials. I had another one that I tried before which was one of these uh, hybrid burl resin blanks but the glue up failed and I decided to not include it in here because it would just take too long. Anyways the material is actually quite nice to work with in terms of how easy it is to shape however it creates a lot of dust and for the shaping I had to go back to my smaller belt grinder because of the built-in dust collection. I hope you can see in the background the scales as well as the steel have small indentations and that is just for the epoxy glue to get more better grip and um, I've also scuffed up the aluminum pins uh, in order for them to get a better grip with the epoxy. 
To keep the clamps clean, I use small pieces of uh, non-stick baking sheets and that worked like a charm. Although I used 5 minute epoxy, I let it cure overnight before I went to shaping. As I said before, because of the dust, it really is a must to have some sort of dust collection as well as a proper um, dust mask, or respirator or whatever to protect yourself from the dust. You can see here I went back and forth from the bigger to the small grinder um, to refine the shapes and um, the big one is obviously good to remove a lot of stock quickly while the smaller one gives me more control about the finer details. I used a scotch bite belt to finish the edges and followed this up with some hand sanding to remove some last imperfections and for the resin I used uh, wet sanding paper and some Windex to polish it up. To protect the wooden handles I used some boiled linseed oil and I love it. Right, where was I? Um, for the resin I used some mineral oil which is also the protection for the steel. And that's it. Here's to you, Heath and Pascal. Thank you very much for your support. It is much appreciated. If you liked the video, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment. If you don't, leave me a thumbs down and a comment. Both are appreciated. If you feel like it, you can visit my Patreon and consider supporting me. That would be even more awesome. Thanks and bye-bye.